Welcome, it's indisputable, good to be with you. We have a lot of show today, breaking down news of the day. I got my big homie, David Schuster, TYT <laughs> contributor. And in the bullpen, my debate segment, we have Brad Palumbo. He is back, fee.org correspondent, National Review contributor. We're gonna talk about labor shortages, minimum wage and overall benefits should be fun. Top story of the day, a woman, who is the chair or was the chair of the Board of Education for Ohio. A white female Republican has been forced to resign because she is in fact not racist. I kid you not, here's the background to the story. Let's put up her picture. This is from the Ohio Department of Education. She was the president of this board, State Board of Education President Laura Kohler and board member Eric Puckler turned in their resignations Friday. Now, why did they do this? I'm gonna get into it. Both were appointed members to the board, okay? So this is a political board, political appointees, right? The Ohio Senate had enough votes to remove them, Kohler said, and the governor did request her to resign. Very political stuff happening. She's a lifelong Republican and she does consider herself to be a moderate. Now, why did I say she was forced to resign because she is not racist? Here's why. The resignations came during a battle of words over anti-racism resolution called Resolution 20. This is great, right? Anti-racism resolution, like anti-bullying resolution. Anti-violence resolution, anti-gang resolution, good stuff. You're on the Board of Education, you should pass resolutions like this, right? So this resolution 20, which is anti-racism resolution, passed the Ohio Board in July of 2020 in the wake of George Floyd's murder. Board members have since rescinded the resolution. Kohler said was opposing racism and advocating equity for all students. There were three appointed members who did vote to rescind the resolution and they were confirmed by the Senate earlier this week. So let me get this right. These individuals during the height of the George Floyd murder when everybody was talking and saying we need to do something, this is wrong, this is evil, this is systemic, this is bigoted, (coughs) this is murder. So in the middle of that, This board says, you know what? We need a resolution saying we are anti-racist in this state and we are willing to stand up against racism. Great, sounds like a good idea. And then all of a sudden, the political powers that be say, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, none of that here, you have to rescind it. And she said, why would I rescind something that's anti-racist? Why would I do that? I'm anti-racist. We are a governing school board, we should be anti-racist. Why would we rescind the resolution? Well, they did, she refused, she was forced to resign. Uh, Kohler was first confirmed by Governor John Kasich uh, to a four year term, two years into the term. Kohler was elected president of the board Um, when that expired in 2021. The current governor uh, appointed Kohler to the board and her colleagues on the board reelected her to a second term as president. Everything all good. Everything's moving along, her career is progressing. People trust her, they like her, she's a conservative, she's one of them, right? Out of all of her political accomplishment, what got her fired de facto? Because she dared say she's actually anti-racist. They did not care that she's a Republican. They did not care that she has served on their board with distinction and honor. They did not care about anything else other than the fact that she would not go on record and rescind her saying she's anti-racist. It gets deeper. She says, and I quote, I consider myself to be a Republican. But I consider myself to be truly a moderate Republican and in mind, that means And in my mind, that means that good ideas can come from both sides of the aisle. She thinks the anti-racism issue, issues are co-mingling with the anti-mask and vaccine movement. 
You know what this was really about, ladies and gentlemen? It was about an intentional conflating of critical race theory as it relates to this resolution. Remember, critical race theory is not taught in K through 12 education, but they want you to fear it. They want you to be afraid of it. People don't really know what it is. It's just bad because somehow to them, it teaches that America is evil and America has to do some fixing. And we don't want that message to our children. We want patriotism. It's interesting, it's fascinating. She has now been forced to resign. Critical race theory is not typically taught in grade school and is pursued as a course of study at the at the college level. Lawmakers in at least 22 states have proposed limits on how schools can talk about racial issues. There it is, that's the real issue. According to NBC News data collected in June, educators have reported being driven out of their jobs, frustrated and exhausted by the contentious fights. Once again, we've said this on the program before, the entire critical race theory debate was a false pretext to create the context so that they can limit the real history of racism in America. Just by talking about racism, you are not teaching critical race theory. Critical race theory is an advanced theoretical framework. It is meant to analyze. I have taught critical race theory since 2016. I've also taught political theory, grounded theory, various theories in mass communications. Nobody had an issue with these theories. It's a way to analyze data. That's what it's for. That's what it's utilized for. It's like saying that calculus and elementary math is the same thing. It is not. My brother, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, Dr. Ritchie, I mean, look, I, I am so glad that you're bringing this uh, horrific story as horrific as it is, because we've long known that at the national level, the federal level, Donald Trump and whatnot, there's an effort to have a purity test for Republicans. Mm. That has seeped down repeatedly to the state and local level. The idea that somehow now Eisenhower Republicans, moderate Republicans in a place like Ohio, like Miss Kohler, like Governor DeWine, like Governor Kasich, there is now a war from the extreme right on them. And time after time, the way the far right is doing this is having these litmus tests. Oh, do you still support that resolution that was passed a few years ago? If you do, you're out. That's crazy. But again, it goes to show how extreme the right is, that it's not enough now to be supporting of you know new resolutions. Now you have to be denouncing things that were good ideas just a few years ago. The idea that, oh yeah, maybe good ideas can come from both sides. Maybe there's nothing wrong with being a Republican and saying, yeah, America has been a racist country. Well, now, according to people in the far right, there's everything wrong with it. And they're doing everything they can to weed these people out. Now, here's the reality. And brother, you made some great points and I echo every single one of them. For those who are still Republicans, you are allowing racist to determine your party. Now, do Republicans have racist in the party? Of course, Democrats got racist in their party too. The issue is, what are you allowing to define your party? You're not even fighting. I mean, she didn't fight them, she didn't go to court. She didn't say you're gonna have to fire me, she resigned. And in her resignation, she still gave complimentary language to the current governor who was the one who requested the damn resignation. You all, I'm talking about Republicans. You all are going to have to fight for the soul of your own party if you got one. If one even exists anymore whatsoever, you are allowing these individuals, these racist, bigoted individuals to define who you are. And here's what will happen. If you allow this to continue, whatever stereotype about you being a Republican is affixed to you, you deserve it. You know why you deserve it? Because you did nothing, not a damn thing to fight against it. And you allowed this racist rhetoric to continue. Let me give you another example. Imagine your number one issue being critical race theory in schools, right? If that's your number one issue as a voter, you would imagine that you would know what the hell it is. Well, not this guy, here it is. What's the most important issue in the governor's race here in Virginia? Getting back to the basics of teaching children, not teaching them critical race theory. And, uh, and, and what is critical race theory? Well, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of it because I don't understand it that much. But it's something that I don't, what little bit that I know I don't care for. And, and what have you heard that, that you don't, well, that you I'm don't not, like? Well, I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I, you know, 
I don't, uh, I don't, I don't have that much knowledge on it, but okay. it's something that I'm not, that I don't care for. Okay, I know you all are watching this saying, what the hell? But here's the thing, I want you to look at it from a different perspective. This is the most honest answer you have probably heard from a Republican. Think about it. Usually they try to offer some weak watered down version of critical race theory, or they try to say something that is not, or they just make up stuff and just throw in all kind of things that don't even connect. This guy told the truth. He said, hey, I don't like it, don't really know exactly what it is. The little bit I do know I don't like it, and I'm not gonna get into it. All true, that's the truth, he doesn't know what it is. Here's the truth, most of them don't, (laughs) none of them know what it is. They don't care to know what it is. Why? Because they are connected to a tribal system now, where their tribal leader, Donald Trump, if he says it's evil, it's evil. If he says it's wrong, it is wrong. They have no ability to think for themselves, he told the truth. It's staggering to think, right? Fascinating, but it's real. Okay, uh, this was from uh, the movie The Supporters. Uh, this is a comedy duo. The good liars uh, go undercover and troll politicians and their supporters. Uh, that's an excerpt that you just saw. Uh, for those who are interested in the movie, The Supporters, it also features them uh, pranking Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Don Trump Jr., the Fox News headquarters, Andrew Yang and Joe Biden among others. Uh, That's going to be a hit. All right, (laughs) my brother, what are your thoughts, man? I mean, the guy told the truth. (laughs) Yeah, and and, and it gets to the truth that is so much of the Republican strategy these days, whether it's you know Fox News or Donald Trump, it's all about the buzzwords, Mm. the key words that they can give to their supporters. So okay, critical race theory, Oh, I hate it, I don't know what it is. Pro-life, well, abortion's terrible, I hate, no, you don't know really what it is. Um, War on Christmas, I know there's a war on Christmas, no, there's no war on Christmas. The fact of the matter is these Republicans are misled because their leaders are saying, here are the bad words, here are the bad things in our society. And there's no room for Republicans to do some independent critical thinking of their own. They're not given the tools to be able to understand, well, what is this really about? And sure, you wanna have a debate about how much of America's racist history we should be teaching schools, okay, well, have at it, we can we can do that. But the idea that instead of having that debate, no, we're simply gonna say there are certain words, there are certain phrases that mean terrible things without understanding what those things really mean. I mean, that's where the Republican Party is. And that's why it's so hard, I think, in these days for people to have any more honest debates when people are so badly informed or misinformed about what the issues of the day are. Absolutely, I agree 100%. Imagine a government worker, a government employee being told what he or she can or cannot say publicly. That would actually be a violation of your first amendment, would it not? The government cannot limit your speech as long as it is lawful, it is legal for you to say it. Well, it's happening, and guess where it's happening? In the state of Florida, of course, it's happening in the state of Florida. Let me give you some background. Professors who are political science professors are being told by the university, which is a government university, that they cannot speak on issues related to voting. How in the hell are you going to shut down protected speech as a government institution? It doesn't matter that you are an educational institution, you are the government. You are a wing of the government in the state of Florida. Here it is, after public outrage over its decision to block professors from testifying as expert witnesses about voting rights, the University of Florida tried to defend itself by issuing a statement claiming to support, and I quote, academic freedom. But critics argued in response that such a defense was blatantly hypocritical and his treatment of his faculty cannot be justified. Here's how it happened. The dispute arose when political science professors Michael McDonald, Sharon Austin and Daniel Smith were told by the university that they could not, not testify as expert witnesses in cases against Florida's voting laws. 
Officials for the university claimed it was a conflict of interest for the professors as state employees to testify in cases against Florida's interest. Let's consult the Constitution here. Here's what the Constitution says. Congress should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging, abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Let me just stop there. The courts have interpreted Congress to mean government, okay? The government cannot do these things. And literally the government is doing these things in the state of Florida by way of the university. Many quickly pointed out that this was a clear case of government censorship, effectively shutting down critics of the state in an extremely consequential circumstance. It's all the more egregious because Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, like many other Republicans, has presented himself as a defender of the value of free speech. Now, I want you to remember the hypocrisy here. You literally have Republicans being led by their cult leader, Donald Trump, filing a lawsuit against Twitter, claiming that, oh my goodness, Twitter is shutting us down. Class action lawsuit. We can't say what we want to say. All of our hatred gets shut down. Lawsuit, class action lawsuit, because they say this is infringing on their right of speech. Twitter is a private damn company. It does not apply. Do you see the hypocrisy here? This is the game they're playing. But literally a governmental institution is shutting down the speech of actual government employees who are qualified to testify in matters related to politics and policy. They're political science professors, damn it. It gets deeper. It is a profound, chilling, frightening change in policy, said Paul Donnelly, a lawyer for the professors. According to the Miami Herald, what would happen if another party was in control and could engage in this kind of censorship? The University of Florida has a long track record, according to them, of supporting free speech and our faculty's academic freedom, and we will continue to do so, blah, blah, blah. On Twitter, one of the professors, McDonald, suggested that even this statement from the university was in part the university's misleading spin. When the professors requested permission to serve as expert witnesses, the university's denial was not based on the fact that it would be paid work as the statement implied, he said. According to the rejection notice he posted, officials objected to the fact that the professor's testimony would be adverse to UF's interest. Oh, don't, don't know, you can't testify, that's, that's not in our interest as the governmental institution. I know it's a university, but it is the government too, it's both, okay? All right, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis has opposed big tech censorship and touted the free speech of parents, um, said political reporter uh, Mark uh, Caputo. Uh, that was on Twitter, but University of Florida has most of three state professors. All right, um, it, let's be very clear. And, and I got to read this from Robert uh, C. Post. Um, a Yale Law School professor, an expert on academic freedom and the First Amendment said he knew of no other case in which a university had imposed prior restraint on the professor's ability to speak. And I don't know of any either. Hmm. Brother, what are your thoughts? First of all, I'm frightened by the censorship, but here's the other thing that also has me terribly frightened. What is it that Florida is so afraid of? Yeah. If you believe in this new Florida voting law, if you believe that it has merits, if you believe that there's a logic behind it, then of course, welcome all of the debate, all of the sunshine into this so that people can decide for themselves. Clearly, Florida is so lacking in confidence in this law that they pass that they have to shut down criticism of it in other ways. To me, that is just horrific on so many levels. Yeah, we're gonna monitor this. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me read some of the updates. Uh, do not forget, indisputable is on podcast. That's fresh content every day, fresh content daily, okay? Make sure you listen, I want you to go ahead and do it. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen, just get it, all right? 
Like it, give us five stars. Make sure you tune in if you enjoy the programming. Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Um, also, deep dive with Jordan Yule right after Indisputable. Tune in to Deep Dive featuring Sam Cedar of the Majority Report. Uh, this is going to be quite interesting because their personalities together, I mean, I got to see this, right? Okay. Also, uh, and don't forget, that's a Twitch exclusive, okay? Also, uh, TYT is looking for new content creators for Rebel HQ. There's a lot here. And I really enjoy these moments because we get to engage with the audience on a different level. We are looking for people to write, produce, host, and edit short form editorial videos on breaking news and political stories with a progressive point of view. If you're interested, go to tyt.com forward slash careers. I just gotta say this, you'll never catch up with David Schuster's numbers, but you can try. <laughs> you can damn sure give it a shot. Now, I don't wanna deflate your sale here. All right, uh, the conversation, uh, don't forget. Uh, right before the Young Turks, um, today, 5.30 PM Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific Time, okay? All right, let me read some of these comments, TYT member. Uh, Lynn says, uh, this story is anti-sane. I see what you did there, I like that. It is anti-sane. Okay, uh, the Great American Healthcare Famine says, so you're telling me that this lady will get her job back if she claims to be racist instead of anti-racist. What in the actual hell? Yeah, that's the logic here. If she would have said, "Oh no, 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 no. You thought I was anti-racist? No, no, I'm anti-anti-racist, which means I'm actually for racism." Okay, misunderstanding all. If she would have said that, no problem. She would still be the school board president of the state of Ohio right now. Interesting stuff, right? Um, Mickey C, the silver hair dragon, I suggest to a friend to try a new dish. They respond, I don't like it. I ask if they've ever had it and they answer no. Well, how the hell do you know you won't like it if you never even tasted it? Shaking my head. Well, that's the logic of many, many on the right, yeah. Uh, Trudy Lawrence, I think you mean I, I'm repeating this. I believe uh, those who throw uh, rocks at Ruby Bridges uh, don't want their grandkids to find out it was them doing it, that's right. Uh, and by the way, the whole Ruby Bridges story, look it up, read it when you get a moment. Because in all of our efforts to integrate, to say that black kids were just as smart as white kids, they still made Ruby take a test in order to allow her entry to sit with white students. Something that none of the white students had to do. That is what critical race theory analyzes, the why or the policy behind it. Okay, um, Rose Rosie, if you talk about racism, then that leads to questions that racists are scared to answer. Plus, you would have to do something about it. That's right. You cannot change what you refuse to acknowledge. So in order to not change things, you have to not acknowledge they exist. Good point. All right, um, let's go to Twitch. Sassy Snicks. Uh, I can see where good people want to resign from leadership roles because so many people are twisting and turning things and name calling. Yeah, Jax Drax, uh, racists work so hard to protect their racism. Yep, uh, intervene, CRT is if you criticize the racism in America. To be a patriot, you're supposed to be proud of the racism. Oh, I get it now, that makes sense now, okay. All right, uh, intervene, uh, silence of them, that's more like cancel culture. Where are the free speech warriors? Get butt hurt over movie roles. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. What happened, sir? <laughs> Who sucks? <laughs> What'd you call me inside the store? A a okay. okay uh for JJ's hats, you're <laughs> Why, because he told you to put a mask on? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, exactly. But why does that uh, Why well, your mask is, uh, look at your nose. God. Look at your nose, you Oh, that's nice. What's your name? Do it, man, do it, do it. I love your website, do it. Hold your nose up and do all this. Stuff. 
Take care, all right? Well, sir, I'm honored to oblige your request. You said put it on your website. Well, we're gonna put it on ours. This is homophobic male Karen. Simple request. You cannot wear, you cannot come in, the sh- in, in this shop without wearing a mask. You must have on your mask. He's unable to wear a mask for whatever reason. He doesn't want to. He feels it violates the civil liberty. I don't give a damn what it is. That means he just needs to go to the next store. But instead of doing that, instead of saying, you know what? I respect your policy, I will keep it moving. Instead of just saying, hey, you know, shove it, I'm gonna keep moving on. You know, simple rudeness. He took it to a whole nother level and decided to go into this homophobic rant against the individual inside of the store who promptly put him on blast. Now, let me tell you why this part is important. It's important because it provides a mirror to the soul of this nation. You see that guy that you just saw, that male Karen, that homophobic slur Karen? He's just as much part of America as anybody else. Not a part we're proud of, not a part we like to promote, definitely not the brighter side of this country. But he's there, and not just him, but the personality permeates throughout the culture. And I want them to be embarrassed about who they are. I want them to be ashamed of their conduct. I want them to realize that every time they engage with an individual like this, that possibly somebody like me will put their ass on blast. And it's better for them to shut the hell up and keep it moving. That may sound harsh, David, I don't think I'm being too harsh. I think I'm being real. No, I think you're being real. I think you're being spot on. I just, you know, wonder if in cases like this, maybe this is some self-loathing that goes on. And I never like to sort of draw attention to somebody's appearances, but you know, with the 1990s <laughs> glasses, with the jacket that's got the sort of the pink underliner. I mean, maybe he's got some homosexual sort of impulses that he's just trying to, you know, put down, and he's struggling with his own identity, so he takes it out on somebody else and call somebody the F word and all the rest of the stuff. But but I mean, look, regardless of somebody's sexual orientation, and that's not the issue here. You can you can you can be in favor of homosexuals, you can be against whatever, whatever you want to do in your own private, you know, home, that's fine. It's not my business. But the fact of the matter is, if you are going to a private business, yeah, you have a responsibility, no shirt, no shoes, no service, no right. mask, no service. You follow the rules. If you don't want to follow the rules, Dr. Richie, as you said, you move on and you find some other establishment. But to go crazy and to hurl all sorts of you know terrible insults at somebody because you're mad or because you hate yourself. I mean, come on, just stay at home. Yeah, what happened to the comment box? You know, what happened to the one star review? What happened to the Google rating? Like, there are other remedies here to express that you don't like a particular policy. All of a sudden, because of the mask issue, people feel as if they need to take it to this level and become bigoted and racist and homophobic and sexist. But it's it's all right, because we're here too, all right? anti Karens of the world, unite. Um, There's a very sad story, Daniel Joseph Triplett, okay, that's him. He's a business owner, has been arrested of murdering his employee. His employee is Brent Mack. And after he allegedly murdered his employee, who's a black male, he then buried the 50 year old black male under a septic tank. Um, Let's put both their pictures up. This is so horrific. You see the killer, the victim is Brent Mack, you see the victim. So let me give you some background to this extreme story. Search for the missing man began in September when Mack's daughter, the black man who was killed, when Mack's daughter, Rachelle Wilson, Reportedly reached out to Triplett, that's the boss man, okay? Reached out to Triplett via Facebook, asking about her father's whereabouts. Now, this makes perfect sense. You haven't heard from your dad, your dad does check in. You have a great relationship with your dad. Okay, let me check with his boss. Checks with him, okay? That's according to court documents. Triplett, the boss, claimed he fired Mac. 
citing alleged violent demeanor. In a sense, deleted online text. Triplett told Wilson that after giving Mac a thousand dollars at severance pay, he dropped him off outside of a local laundromat. Lieutenant Bruning asked Dan about locations where he dropped Mac off, and Dan changed the story several times. He changed the location of where he dropped him off. That's Daniel Joseph Triplett. Okay, things are getting suspicious now, right? Law enforcement officials said a search warrant was executed at Triplett's home and officers found a statement book for a client at E County Road 69. Who identified both Triplett who was white and Mac who was black showing up to install a septic tank. Video showed Mac getting into the hole made for the septic tank but never leaving. The client told the cops that only one man left after the job was done. When investigators dug up the tank, they found Mac's body. This alleged murderer lit- literally purchased the grave of the person he would kill and had them both work on the septic tank. What a plot, extremely evil. On October 22nd, 2021, Agent Woodward was notified by uh, that the medical examiner's office had located was believed to be a projectile in the chest cavity with an entry wound in the upper left back. Authority said Triplett is currently in custody at Logan County Jail and is being held without bond. He was charged with one count of murder in the first degree and desecration of a human corpse. That's brutal, that's evil. My brother, what are your thoughts? Well, look, for people who live in the city who may not know what a septic tank is, a septic tank is one of these sort of chambers that is underground outside homes and rural areas that is made of concrete or plastic or whatnot. And that's where all the sewage goes to degrade. So not only is it, okay, a place where this guy shot his worker and wanted to kill him, but it is perhaps the most disrespectful place ever Mm. to leave a human body. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's it's horrifying on so many levels. And it just, I mean, you want to kill somebody, you know, that, that's wrong on so many levels, but it takes a certain level of depravity even beyond that to do it in the manner in which this guy allegedly did. Man, and my heart goes out to the family and the friends of this brother um, who is now dead, uh, Brent Mack. And to think that he literally was riding with his killer, he was, uh, making a purchase and helping his killer uh, dig a hole that he would eventually be buried in. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. Welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Um, okay, TYT member Chipper Nightshade. Yep. Often it is self-loathing, it is a self-loathing thing. Before I finally came out, I had a lot of self-loathing issues. But I did not use slurs because I still respected others and their life choices. Once I worked on myself and accepted myself for what I was, all self-hatred disappeared. Isn't that amazing how that works? Yep, good for you, okay? Uh, Peter Hamby, rules expose Karens, revealing their phobias. They wanted to hide from the haiku dragon. Uh, thank you for Zilla. Cryptician, this is a hate crime and needs to be treated as such. Um, Twitch, Haiku Dragon, he probably thought he'd been so clever that nobody would find him. Yeah. All right. This is a very sad story about racism in a school system and the school leader standing up to defend it, okay? Parents are upset after black students at a Florida high school are suspended for fighting another student who sent them a racist Snapchat video, okay? Um, A boy says, a young man says in the video, hold on, 
You see that before pointing directly at the camera and stating it's a and says the N word. One of the young men in the video was spotted wearing a KKK like hood. Let's put up the picture. We have blurred some of this stuff out, okay? Nassau County School District Assistant Superintendent Mark Durham seemed to defend the students, the racist ones, by stating that they haven't even started attending Yulee High School near Jacksonville when the video was filmed over the summer. Let's put up a picture of the superintendent because I got a statement that I'm going to read from him. I want you to take a good look at this guy, okay? In my opinion, he's part of the problem. Let me read to you his statement. He says, and I quote, the video was not meant to be shared outside of a small group of friends. And it was not targeted at any particular student. Okay, why do you just say so, uh, Mr. Superintendent? Uh, obviously, that makes it better. Uh, Durham told News for Jax in a brief statement. Uh, the two students in the video say they meant it as a joke amongst friends and did not intend for anyone outside of their small group to view it. You see what's happening here, right? He's defending them. He's literally saying, well, you know, it was really just meant to be between them and their friends who were also obviously racist um, because their parents taught them racism. Let's just all let it be and let's move on. He says nothing about the victims of racism. He says nothing about the sting of racism. He simply defends those who exhibit it, racism, horseplay, they're having fun, no biggie. Now, why do you think he holds this sentiment? Could it be possibly because he too agrees with them? He jokes around like this with his buddies. The statement was made after the video was shared around the school, which led to conflicts among students, parents of black students at uh, at the Florida High School are now infuriated after they say their children were suspended for getting into an altercation with a white student who sent them a resurfaced video of two white boys making racist remarks. But the students in the video were not disciplined. So the black students have an issue with it. It creates conflict at the school because the school failed in their leadership here. And who do they suspend? They suspend the black students. Well, the black students were suspended, were part of a football team. Their teammates did want to support them. Players on the football team had intended to skip the game or kneel as an act of dissent. However, the school administration warned them that taking that route would result in them forfeiting the remainder of the season. I'd be damned if they would have just taken a knee and still played the game. The leader of the school says, if you do that, you will forfeit the entire season. How dare you stand up for black people? But it's the same thing, isn't it? Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, these students saying that they're going to take a knee. It wasn't about taking a knee. They're football players to take a knee after they make a touchdown, they pray to white Jesus, that's on them. They take a knee all the time, right? Taking a knee was not the issue. If they would have taken a knee for more research money for cancer, nobody would have had a problem with it. If Colin Kaepernick took a knee to bring awareness to extreme violence in America, nobody would have had an issue. Gangs, nobody would have had an issue. But they took a knee about racism. They were going to take a knee about racism. Colin Kaepernick took a knee about racism. It's what? The knee is being taken for that becomes the problem. Uh, brother, what are your thoughts here? A couple of things. First of all, um, look, students, teenagers, a lot of teenagers make mistakes, right? I mean, that's just part of growing up. But it's the responsibility of the grown ups, it's the responsibility of the teachers or the superintendents to take these mistakes and turn them into productive 
teachable moments. There's so many different ways the superintendent could have made this a moment where everybody learns something about what is racism and what is the KKK and why is this such a sensitive issue? And what is the history of racism in America? There's so many different ways the superintendent could have facilitated that sort of dialogue. Likewise, teachers, educators should be encouraging students to take a knee for something they feel strongly about and foster dialogue, discussion and debate about it. As an educator, you shouldn't be squelching that. Yep. Don't squelch that. Have people talk about it. That is the way we learn. That's right. Well said. All right. Uh, Halloween, right? <laughs> people are having fun. Children are trick or treating. Uh, it's you know, it's one of those holidays. Okay. Everybody doesn't celebrate it. Cool. If you don't celebrate it, let people know, and they will keep it moving. Well, for this particular young lady, 35 years of age, she pulled out a gun on a seven-year-old. A gun on a seven-year-old. 35 year old Monica Ann Bradford from Buda, Texas was arrested after allegedly pointing a loaded gun at a seven year old who was out trick or treating. Let's put up a picture. That's Monica. She has no attorney of record as of yet. That's from the Hayes County Sheriff's Office. According to the Hayes County Sheriff's Office, on October 31st, 2021, at approximately 7.20 PM, deputies responded to the 100 block of Quarter Avenue in Buda, Texas for a report of an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. After investigating, it was determined that a resident in that area was yelling at children who were walking outside her residence trick or treating. Bradford exited her residence with a loaded weapon and pointed it at a seven year old child who was walking in front of the residence. Bradford was in fact taken into custody and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, a second degree felony. Bradford was transported to the Hayes County Jail. Her bond was set at $10,000 cash or surety, which means she can put up property as well. Authorities are still conducting interviews, no further information is available. Uh, the incident occurred after Texas Republicans uh, this year enacted a new law allowing what? Allowing handguns to be carried without permit or training. They call it constitutional carry. They don't want any license, no prerequisite for you to carry a gun. You don't have to go and get a license to do so because it's constitutional. So they believe in constitutional carry, but they do not believe in constitutional voting. No, you gotta have an ID for that. You need to present evidence of your right to vote, but you don't need to present evidence of your right to bear arms. That's the logic of Texas. My brother, your thoughts. What was this woman doing with a gun to begin with? I mean, clearly she has psychiatric problems. And if you know, <laughs> if we had a basic right. decency in America, basic respect for our fellow human beings, we would make it more difficult for people to have weapons so that people like this who might try to point a gun, a loaded gun at a child, they shouldn't be able to have a gun in the first place. And yeah. I have a feeling that when investigators do their questioning of the neighbors, they will discover that this woman is troubled. She is mentally ill. That's the issue here. When mentally ill people are allowed to slide through the cracks and get their hands on weapons, thank God she actually didn't fire this thing. Yeah, thank God for that. So we'll see what happens in their investigation. But I think you're right. I think they're going to find some other things in her background. Now, all right, an Alabama judge booted from the bench for saying the N word, for saying George Floyd got what he deserved. He's a judge in Alabama, doesn't even have a law degree. I'm going to explain everything, okay? Let's put up a picture of Talladega County probate judge Randy Jinks. That's Randy. They say Randy is a handful. Judge Jinx denied most of the claims, blamed workers for misinterpreting his jokes and for eavesdropping. I mean, how dare they listen to me while I'm being racist? Okay, he was ousted in a unanimous order filed Friday by the Alabama Court of the Judiciary. This is an oversight. Agency. Uh, following a trial, the panel found that he violated five judicial ethics rules, including failing to uphold the integrity and independence of the court system. Jinx, the judge, 
who doesn't have a law license. Now, some of you are saying, well, how in the hell did that happen? Well, there's a little known rule in Alabama. If the population is below a certain number of people, you do not need to possess a law degree in order to serve on certain judicial benches, okay? So there you have it. Um, was first elected back in 2018, took office the following year. His conduct was subject to a complaint filed in March that accused him of watching and sharing sexually inappropriate videos and making comments about the appearance and anatomy of women. Okay, well, this, he's doing it, it's not on his free time, he's doing this on the government time with other employees. Judge Jinx also mouthed the N word when referring to black people including during Black Lives Matter demonstrations and told a deputy clerk that black people get benefits and welfare because of the color of their skin that don't go to white people. The complaint said Judge Jinx made multiple racist comments after Minneapolis police killed George Floyd, a black man whose death became a rallying point for protest nationally, including calling the victim just another thug and saying he pretty much got what he deserved. That is all in the complaint. He also remarked on a black employee's purchase of a new car jokingly asking whether they were selling drugs to afford the Mercedes they had just purchased. Now, do you think that judge can be fair? Do you think that judge believes in equitable remedy in the judiciary. Now here's what has to happen. You gotta go back and look at his cases now. Mm. You gotta go back and look at how he's ruled. You gotta go back because no way in the hell did this guy rule fairly in all of his judicial decisions. My brother, what are your thoughts? You're spot on. I mean, everything in his record needs to be reexamined, particularly anything, any case involving minorities or people who were disenfranchised. But I mean, here's the other thing about it is, I mean, I still find it shocking. Here's a guy who clearly likes pornography. He's clearly a racist and he got elected even in a small town like Alabama. I mean, it goes to show just how racist and how backwards a lot of these towns, particularly across the US South, still are. The idea that this guy can be a judge without a law degree while he's watching his pornography and making all these horrific comments, I mean, good grief. Look, white privilege is the fact that this guy is only gonna lose his job. If he was not white, I guarantee more severe things would be happening to him because of this kind of behavior. Very well said, and it is interesting that yes, he got elected. Yes, he was working for a number of years before any of this even surfaced. And then it doesn't seem as if he has acknowledged any of his wrongdoing whatsoever. So literally he loses his job, but he remains a free man. He probably would not be charged with any crimes for judicial misconduct. Hell, I highly doubt they even investigate the previous cases that he was involved in. I highly doubt they do that. And listen, he can't be disbarred. Why? Because he doesn't have a damn bar license. <laughs> What's gonna happen? And there is no public shame. I mean, look, the guy has already shamed himself. He's clear that's not gonna dissuade him, I suppose. I mean, he's living in a very small town, probably kind of a backwards town if they've got folks like him who are judges. So, you know, he's already leading a very shameful life. I just wish there were more consequences. Yeah, everybody seems, it seems like everybody already knew this stuff about him all. You know, they already knew this about him. My brother, always good to have you on the show. Tell people how they can follow you. Dr. Richie, people can follow me on Rebel HQ TYT, either on Facebook, YouTube, also on the TYT site. We got videos we put up on Rebel HQ, progressive videos, news of the day, some analysis, some commentary. Um, so we thank everybody for their support. And Dr. Richie, it is always a pleasure being on with you, my friend. Thank you so much. The feeling is mutual. Your commentary and your videos are professional and they give me so much life. I have followed you before I got to TYT. I love your work continually. Thank, Thank you for you. doing all you right do. Right back at you. Uh, don't forget that we indisputable with Dr. Rashad Richard, we are on podcast. So you can check us out wherever you get your podcast from. Make it happen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Acast, wherever you listen to podcasts. All you gotta do is search for indisputable, right? Click follow and rate us five stars if you like the programming. All right, we got next deep dive, all right? Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.